Uh, hello everybody, welcome to another Ride Along with Goggles. And uh, here we are at Walker Farms doing a pickup. We've got a load of grain, and it's 42, 43,000 pounds. And it's heading down to Bozeman, and it's urgent, so we best get a move on. Uh, we got just the truck for it. We got Ruta's uh, W900 here. We got um, the uh, old school skin on it. And this is, uh, I've got the, 70, the 72 inch flat top here, and it's the first one I've done. I've got to do all the other caps yet. But um, tomorrow, I don't know how much time I'll have to work on it, but maybe by Tuesday or Wednesday I'll have this skin out. And uh, it's looking pretty good. And I, I kind of dig it with this uh, electric blue, I kind of really warming up to this color. Let's get the brakes off and get underway here. All right, we should be able to just wheel out here to the right. Handy thing is uh, you can't quick travel to uh, Shelby, but hey, I own the farm, so you can travel to a garage. And if you didn't know how to do that, just in case, if you, um, say for example, you're looking at your map and what you want to do is you want to um, travel to uh, a location. Well, you pick the, you know, a city and say there, quick travel to there. And uh, bang, you land at a service center. Well, what you can do with your garages, if you didn't know, uh, you can either use the list and go through them, but you can, um, look at map view so you're looking at like the map like you would use in quick travel but it's all your garages and then what you can do is uh, pick the garage you want to go to in the little menu I'll only have about three options on the left side of the screen where you know one of them will be travel so you can travel to the garage for about the same money you do a quick travel but you land right in your yard so in this case, the job was here, and I was down in, man, where was I? I think I was in Steamboat Springs, maybe? And so I wanted to get up here, so it was just a matter of traveling to the uh, Walker Farms, and there was the job, and being urgent, there was like uh, two hours to get here, so. If I didn't have a dev console or use the dev console, I would have had to fly to or quick travel to Haver and drive over here, and I may not have got the load. So After just 100 yards, turn right. Just a little tip on how you can uh, quick travel uh, to a garage. Turn right. Hop in for a bit here. Uh, yeah, lights are on. So see that red bit up, up by the CB radio up top? Actually, I painted that on the template, so I think I'm going to leave it, though. dark red kind of goes with a lot of different things so Turn left. and I have I better just check to make sure yeah I got the red interior in here so that's kind of a neat thing So I'm recording this on Sunday, and 
what a day it's been. But um, we'll try and get more work done tomorrow. I think I got a oh, uh, I got to adjust the pinion angle on the caddy, to drop it down, and uh, and uh, I got to go see a buddy in the afternoon. But I'll get back at uh, the skins uh, tomorrow night or. Uh, cop car to the last second. He was blending. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I'll get to it. And then uh, I'd like to have it out by Wednesday at the latest. I think I can do maybe even Tuesday later in the day. Well, that would be good. on the mod. Well, that's cool, eh? It's kind of like an old Ferrari or something, but imagine, uh, I don't know if it's a made-up car or a real one. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm pretty intrigued with that. And when it was on their Facebook, excuse me, <laughs> when it was on their Facebook page, I saw a, um, they're working on a W900. Either working on or it's out, I'm not sure. But uh, the drawings that they showed of the suspension components and stuff, really neat. But it looks good. So, oh boy. More trucks. <laughs> um, bad time to get another one because as soon as I get a truck the first thing I got to do is come up with some paint jobs and uh, I got uh, this W900 has proven to be a lot of work with all the different cabs and sleeper options but hey I kind of this bed now I'm lying in it with uh, doing all these skins. Not that I don't enjoy it or anything. I absolutely, uh, I really do enjoy it, but it can be a bit of a chore at times. Like before this uh, Ruta update came along. You know, I thought I had the next three or four days all mapped out what I was going to do. And none of it's happened. <laughs> so, just kind of the way it goes. Oh man, I should put that window up. There we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, I remember uh, my first two trucks I had, I did, didn't have air conditioning. And I had to be hard on my hearing because 
constantly driving with the windows down in the summer when it was hot out anyway vent windows angled open to blow the air in and yeah it was loud then I got my third truck I factory ordered it and uh, the air conditioning was real high on the list and that was nice faster here. Not that fast. Uh oh, helicopter. Uh, oh, it's on the other side of the road. That usually means accident when you see one of those. Hey, that's what I should do. I got it. Oh, man. Okay, that's going to be a trip in the near future. Hauling the uh, trucks, the Kenworth trucks, that's always, I haven't done that in a long time. Yeah, that'd be fun. They're kind of neat to tow. One follows the other. It's like a really short triple. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, Global Mills. That should be pretty cool. I don't think... Uh, have I been to the one in Bozeman? Not sure. We'll find out soon enough. Hey, there's a Peterbilt pulling that Kenworth trailer. <laughs> oh, well. They're, they're all Packard, I guess made by the same manufacturer, well, they're owned by the same parent company, let's put it that way, which would mean there's, there's going to be a lot of shared parts between the trucks. This one is my radio 
channels, and this one's my volume. Now these rotary, rotary encoders are super handy. get so many functions out of them. So this one here, like they, they, they all have a push button feature. And so you'll see when I want to see the uh, change the dash map, I push this one. If I want to see the uh, world map, I push that one. I don't think I have anything assigned to the push on these two. This one, if I push it, the radio turns on, like brings up the radio menu. Uh, or alternatively, if I just turn it one way or the other, it'll automatically start playing whatever's queued up in my, uh, like, I, I don't use the radio stations a whole lot. Um, I did program in a whole bunch of my own. Uh, I went to, there's a website, I um, can't remember the link to it, but, uh, I have it saved, obviously, and you can, um, find your local or favorite radio stations and put them in. So I have a few local Calgary stations I can listen to when I'm driving if I want. And some global or worldwide ones like uh, that have worldwide reach like BBC or something like that. And so if you want news or things like that. Oh, left here. Um, yeah, so it's kind of neat, but I usually just I got a big pack of pile of tunes in there that I like to listen to. Some of them are really good, like big uh, like whiskey blues playlist. That's really good. Or uh, you know highway tunes like rock and roll cruising tunes. Got country music. Got I kind of like surf music too, so I got a bunch of that. kinds of music. People ask me what kind of music do you like and my answer is usually just good music. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not a one genre guy but I hate it's got to be music. Like if it's music and your toe taps to it, I'm in. I don't like stuff that you gotta go, you know, concentrate and try and figure out what the heck is going on and what are they saying and uh, you know, all that sort of nonsense doesn't work for me. A little 240Z here on the right. 240Z, I guess. Uh, 240Z here where I'm from. Such, such good uh, scenery. Wow. I don't remember driving in this direction before, but who knows? Uh, we may well have. I'm really speeding. It's 45 miles an hour here. I don't quite get that. I wonder if that's like that in real life, or the game is mislabeled. store to cruise to resume to. This is my resume button. Here, my cruise is over here. Of course, my signals are here on my left fingers. High and low beam is down on my left foot. Fairly handy control layout, layout setup. Jake is here on my little finger, down on the shift knob. Yeah, when I first got this game, 
my my sim rig here was a racing sim. I got it set up for racing, and uh, I I had the seat lower, and uh, like this is all adjustable. Like my whole platform here goes in and out. I can move the whole thing, and uh, so for my reach to the steering wheel, I can change that. I can move this whole platform, the stick is on back and forth, and I can move my pedals up and down, Turn right. but uh, <laughs> I got this sim, and I saw it, because I was doing aviation stuff a lot, and I was watching Jeff Flaviano, Faviano, Flaviano, uh, doing, um, Go straight. oh yeah, we've been to this General Mills before. Anyway, uh, getting some, what was it, GPS advice or something, I don't know. And I checked his channel out. I saw this game, him doing a review of it. And yeah, man, I was in like uh, a dirty shirt. And so I had to uh, change this from, I raised the seat up and I built this dash panel. Because, oh yeah, the reason I mentioned that is I had the keyboard in my lap and I had the little steering wheel and I'm like messing with the steering wheel on the keyboard I could see the attraction to the game but I uh, I couldn't really get into the messing with the keyboard and uh, what I used to do is I used to have that speaker my big bass speaker up here you probably can't see it I had it back here and on it, I have a little rack that I put my keyboard in. And so my keyboard was right here and I could do things with the keyboard. It was kind of, it wasn't bad, but uh, it wasn't as good as this. Because now I just don't need the keyboard for driving, so pretty handy. I think there's, a, I got a video of the, or early on before I added things to it. And, um, you know, there's been changes, so it's a little out of date. There's another one on how I did the steering wheel adapter. Like this adapter, I had to uh, draw it up in Fusion 360 and then 3D print it. I have a 3D printer. It's a pretty handy thing. I should actually uh, use it to make a, a mount to move my stream deck up here. That would be kind of cool. I got more aluminum scraps from this computer case that I used to uh, make this panel out of. I could probably uh, scotch up some more of that material and make an aluminum bracket. Yeah, I'd like to uh, get that Stream Deck thing off of that little platform, and then this thing was kind of temporary. Yeah, I made it of wood. It's in a steel mount. This whole frame is steel. I, I welded it up out in the garage. But uh, I... Uh, kind of looked at it as temporary and it's really ugly now that I dropped it lower for the for the TH8A and uh, anyway <laughs> enough of that let's get this load off of here see how we did excellent wow we used a lot of fuel for 336 I guess we were howling along at a good rate but the pay wasn't bad. Yeah, so... Yeah, the truck is... Uh, that's the... What you see the skin here, we can't see the trailer on. Got old school on the rear fenders here now. And... Uh, it's looking pretty sharp. 
got the uh, stripes on the frame. It's got this mid bumper here. I put a stripe across there. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, I put a Kenworth logo on the hood. Because so <laughs> he's got one down there, darn it. I might have to take that off. I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave it or take it off? And I put it there because where the stripes come across the hood and go, they come over the hood and go down, the Kenworth script on the truck actually just gets into that. It's high enough, but it gets into the, the inner stripe coming down. And it just looks like, well, why did you paint the truck like that? You know, so I didn't put the logo on and I thought, well, I need a Kenworth logo. I put that on there and then I get it, stick it on the truck, come over here, hop in the truck and look and go, oh, that's kind of redundant. Dope. Oh, well. Anyway, um, thanks to everyone for following along and watching. Thanks to the old subscribers who have been with me for a while. And thanks to you new guys and gals. And uh, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. And bye for now.